intro. I just had to. I had the stupidest. Can you not? What are you even doing? I'm excited. Oh. Are you excited about the video we just made? Yeah. <laughs> Is that what you were going to uh, tease right there? No. Get it? Get it? Oh, there's... There's, there's all the teasing. there's all the C teasing that uh, could C teasing, oh that's so good. Yeah, C teasing man. Uh, no one's gonna get that for a little while. Yeah, but, but they'll really they'll get it. Channel yeah. super fun man. It is gonna have quite a video on it in a little while here, and uh, you guys are gonna you guys are gonna like it if you know what I mean. Um, they'll like the finish. No, what I am upset about is my stupid laptop oh. that we had a new person start today so I actually had to give up my desk I no longer have a desk in the editing den all five of them are consumed by <laughs> shooter slash editor people um, so I was like okay well that's fine I'll just use my laptop and so I went downstairs I set up a table for myself and I like started working on something and I was like, oh, I got to reboot and I rebooted and boom, Windows installation corrupted. So I went from having two oh. usable computers at the office to having zero in a span of like six <laughs> minutes. Um, so I actually had to re reformat my computer before the show today. Holy and crap. so I'm not OK. So the, 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 the final like where I'm trying to get to with this story is I'm not logged into Twitch in. yeah, and yeah. I can't see the Twitch chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's when did all yeah. that happen? Because you've already obviously nine edited this and installed like Office and stuff. Uh, yeah, it happened like two hours ago. It was before we shot that thing with the um, with the. Um, okay, so channel super fun. Should should we say what it involves? Let's say what it involves. Dildos. There is a channel super fun that involved unconventional use of dildos. Okay. Quite a few of them too. So get subscribed. Get subscribed because it's going to be awesome. It is. All right. Let's. Uh, what do we got for topics today? Uh, Samsung and Oppo sued over bloatware in China. That's good. Everyone should get sued over bloatware. Okay, not everyone should get sued over bloatware. Most uh, people. Download the Linus Tech Tips app. Comes complete with McAfee and Ask Jeeves we toolbar. Don't have one. No, we don't. Well, we do have one, but we don't have I one. Don't. No. Don't ignore it altogether. Yes. Uh, Logitech changes name to Logi, sort of. Kind of, maybe a little bit. We'll talk about that later. 7 nanometer chip prototype by IBM. Ooh. Also, Ellen Pau, the interim CEO of Reddit, has mutually resigned. Mutually resigned. <laughs> has been mutually pushed out the door. Mutually. She pushed backwards. <laughs> Actually sore from filming that video. It really is, but mine's not. You'll understand why, and it. it huh, it's okay. It's not related to dildos, but it's definitely related to penises, and that will make more sense when you watch the video. Wow. Um. So. Samsung and Oppo sued over bloatware in China. The original poster here is Captain Gaz. And I'm going to go ahead and pull up the original article here from Android Authority. There we go. Just to be clear, my throat is also sore. But not actually from that video. Oh. Wow. Okay. So, uh... <clears throat> Alright, so the lawsuit came about following numerous consumer complaints about unwanted apps. So the case is actually the first of its kind filed by the Consumer Rights Commission to be accepted by a Shanghai court. So the Galaxy Note 3 has 44 pre-installed apps in the Chinese market, wow. and the Oppo Find 7a has 71 pre-installed apps by default. Now, we get it. The business model behind pre-installed apps is that you get a kickback from the app maker because they can, in theory, monetize somehow. 
<laughs> or or it's just keeping people within your locked tight ecosystem. Yes. So, so okay. So when it's a third party pre installed app, it's all about um, monetizing it somehow. So you're taking your user base and you're monetizing it, allowing those app makers to have that as their user base, which they can then monetize, whether it's through microtransactions in a game or whether it's through uh, selling personal details, whether it's anonymously or like the more nefarious kind where it's actually tied to the actual individual. And then what Luke was saying too was when it's more like Samsung's or Oppo's own yeah. like first party apps? How many parties are there? Okay, well whatever. First party. Samsung's own apps installed, well it's, that's just a clever way of trying to present a better value to the consumer um, to get them locked into that platform because maybe say they like Samsung's mail app and better than someone else's. And then if you go to buy a phone in the future you can be like, well it doesn't have all those things that I used all the time and then you'll want the same phone. Which is fine if you can remove them, but um, yeah, that's not always necessarily the case. So the problem is that neither company informed consumers about the number of apps pre-installed in the handsets and that consumers are not offered any information on how to uninstall those that they don't want. So the smartphone companies have 15 days to enter a defense after which a trial date will be announced. It's really interesting to me that pre-installed apps have have now turned into a potentially legal issue for the companies that are putting them on because which is cool this is something that we've been dealing with since like you know buying a gateway with an aol crap on it and like norton 360 wild tangent games you have to use the norton removal tool to take it off have because you it's so parasitic ever <laughs> have you ever played a wild tangent game no but i've removed it off of so many computers hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them that's right you worked for geek squad and a few other Places. So you really have removed it? I actually it have. <laughs> yes, and like the Norton removal, I had a script and a USB, and it was one of those, uh, what was it, the, the U2 whatever USBs mm -hmm. that had auto whatever that people used for hacking all the time, but I used the auto thing to launch a script which would just run through, remove Wild Tangent Games, it would remove all the ones that were on everything. Right. So it would remove Wild Tangent Games, uh, it would run the Norton removal tool. We would do all this stuff and just nuke all the things right at the beginning. Just be like, screw this computer, screw that computer, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Don't want your crap, no one cares about your stupid game. That <sighs> is freaky. I wonder what awesome. Wild Tangent is doing now. I don't I'm know. I'm going to Google this. Because I haven't heard of them in a really long time. They're uh, a thing. No, 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 no. They, oh, oh, they're, they're still a thing. They're owned by HP? Wild Tangent Games for HP. Ah, uh, what? No, because ASUS had it. ASUS had Wild Tangent stuff pre-installed yeah, on a like laptop it. recently. Redmond, Washington-based game network privately held in the United States that powers game services for several PC manufacturers, including Dell. No, no, they're their own thing. I think okay. that one. Maybe it's just because we're looking at WildTangent.ca. And like maybe in maybe. this territory, Wild Tangent is partnered with HP in some strategic maybe. way. Or something, but it's just like, you know, maybe maybe we're being too hard on Wild Tangent. I have never played one of their games. Is it possible? It looks like they have like DS games and stuff. What? Is it possible that their games are no more offensive than Space Pinball? I like Space and Pinball. And this is not a sponsorship integration for Wild Tangent. It really wouldn't be based on how much we've ta talked about how we've Yeah, I don't, I don't think anyone's worried about that. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> making sure it's very clear. I mean, what is what is what is open a boutique? Sugar Games. <laughs> Shut up. It's $10. Are you for real? Oh my god. So wait, is their monetization platform trying to get people to buy the games? I've honestly never launched the app. I've just yeah. It. Does it come with demos? Maybe the Twitch chat knows. Twitch chat seems to know all kinds of things sometimes. Buy a fire pole. Wild tangent comes Why with every is HP purchase. Luke fire pole. Mm -hmm. Space pinball rules. Yes, indeed. Why doesn't Steam come pre-installed instead of Wild Tangent? Great question. That'd be fantastic. You can get Steam using Ninite.com. Yeah. 98.com is basically the equivalent of like WinRAR, Chrome, Steam, FileZilla. I love how we have Twitch staff Paint that watch this stream consistently. <laughs> You're awesome. Yeah. That's all I have to say. 
Uh, so no one is saying that wild tangent. Really, no one's talking about it. I don't think it, anybody no. knows. They just see it on the computer and they remove it because it's garbage. <laughs> Oh, and it, it would take up a lot of space sometimes. Too. I know it was huge. I know, especially back in the day when laptops had like yeah. you know eighty gig hard drives. It's you, like you have the operating system and then Wild Tangent games, and you're just done. It's like no, you cannot take up a couple hundred megs on an eighty gig hard drive if you're not something useful. Yeah. Period. Yeah, I, it's really funny. This this really makes me. This sends me back to like the day when like like my parents first computer one of our hard drives was I, oh shoot i it was something ridiculous we had a small one and a big one and if i recall correctly the big one was 100 megabytes <laughs> and i was just like <laughs> great <laughs> <laughs> it could hold almost nothing. <laughs> it was awesome. And, like, nowadays, we've just reached the point. Like, I think once we cracked the one terabyte capacity per drive, combined with how so much of our storage is cloud-based, which might not necessarily benefit you in terms of, like, okay, I want to look at that picture. I'm going to download it from my cloud account. No, no, not necessarily. Although some people do use Facebook purely as a picture repository. Yep. Um, no, I mean cloud storage in the sense that, or, or like, cloud-based in the sense that, like, you don't have to have every game installed on your computer all the time because it's, like, a half an hour process of swapping in disks and, like, reinstalling it and looking up that stupid CD key! Where is it? And that kind of nonsense. You didn't have that that bad because you kept a database. Uh, I did too. Yes, but there was quite. A, I think I bought uh, Warcraft three three times, and then I was trying to like screw it. I'm logging all this stuff. Yep, Starcraft. I bought more than once. Yeah. Uh, Starcraft one. Yeah. Um, you know, I wonder if Blizzard became such a big company because people had to rebuy their games so many damn times. Well, you only needed the key by the Starcraft stage. You actually only needed your key. In fact, my Warcraft 3 disc was missing forever. No, my, my problem is losing the keys. Oh, you would lose the keys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, no, I, I do have a key repository. Because I, had, yeah. I, I immediately downloaded ISOs for those discs. Right. I just needed the keys. Game Copy World! Yes, exactly. I am not putting CDs in my computer. That is stupid. <laughs> I paid for this software. <laughs> If I can't find my 1602 AD CD, I am still going to trade, like, wool and cloth and fight pirates, period. <laughs> it's going to happen. Game Copy World was the best. Oh, my Are God. Are they still around? I don't... Again, let's look up something old. Yeah, I have... I actually legitimately have no idea, because that was, like... Remember Far Cry? Yeah. Yep. Had five discs? Yeah. And I was just oh like... Oh, my God, it looks the same! It still looks exactly the same. That's hilarious. Uh, wow. Oh, that's awesome. This is wonderful. Important notice. Wow, you are, this is so... It like, looks... That site looks so early 2000s. What? Dragon Age Inquisition, FIFA 2015, Dying Light, Witcher 3. So they still have no they CD still patches? Run stuff. I guess people... Some people still buy CDs of the game, so they might actually have use for an OCD patch. Wow. There it is, guys. Game Copy World. Got that Pac-Man logo. I this love is, it. Feel, makes me feel so old school because they're advertising Eve, too. Right. Wow. <laughs> All right, should we do any it's actual so topics epic. today? Oh, um, man. I mean, yes. The OnePlus 2 is going to have 4 gigs of LP DDR4 RAM. So the official statement, why oh. did we choose LP DDR4 for the OnePlus 2? Lower well, power consumption and better battery efficiency. Didn't Twice see that the bandwidth performance as LP DDR3 at the same power Didn't consumption. Didn't see that one power. coming. Lower operating voltage than its press rate, press predecessor. I didn't see that one coming. From 1.2 volts to 1.1 volts. Speeds of up to 32 gigabytes per second. It is twice as fast as LP DDR3. That's actually the same is the second point, yeah. which was twice the bandwidth performance. Yeah. Uh, it also happens to be the only type of RAM to run on the Snapdragon 810. It's interesting... Literally the only one they could have used. It's inter <laughs> <laughs> it is interesting to me that the Snapdragon 810 was the choice. I mean, even though, like, okay, do you, do you know about, like, the whole thing going on with Snapdragon 810? 
No. So basically, it, it, thermal throttles like a bitch in pretty much every phone. Um, now, with that said, the OnePlus 2 should be pretty big. And if they decide to build in a, a pretty beefy thermal solution, they might have fewer problems than it, with it than others have. But LG in the G4, my video of which is up on Vessel but not YouTube yet, I think, so if some of you have, may have seen it already, on the G4, um, I was surprised having done zero research on the G4 until I was holding it in my hand. Because I'm not, like, I'm not an obsessive phone guy. But, like, I've spent enough time with enough phones, I have absolutely no problems reviewing them. It's just that I'm not, I'm not, I'm not reading rumor sites. Yeah. So when it arrives, I'm like, okay. And I was like, oh, this has a Snapdragon 808 in it. So that's actually four low-power cores and only two high-performance cores versus the four high-performance cores in the 810, not to mention that it has no support for LPDDR4. And I was like, this is a flagship phone. This is a $600 phone. Are you guys for real? And it was really interesting because Android Authority did a great article where they had the uh, the G4 and the G Flex 2, which are similar, like both current generation yep. flagship class phones, one of which runs the 810, the G Flex 2, and one of which, which runs the lower end, cheaper actually, 808. And they discovered that the, the G Flex 2, and, and they could only really say G Flex 2 because you can't say, oh, the 810 throttles more than the 808 because we're yeah, just yeah, looking yeah. at two individual phones. Different thermal profiles. But the G Flex 2 throttled like crazy, whereas the G4 took, I think it was something in the neighborhood of six minutes to start really thermally throttling, meaning that you're actually, unless you're doing something heavily multi-threaded, which let's face it, doesn't happen that often on a phone, like if you're encoding video on your phone, which yeah. you might do once in a while. I've done that twice. Yeah, I've done it a couple times, but like, you know. Um, so if you're doing anything that's not heavily multi-threaded, you could actually be better off with an 808. So uh, anyway, the OnePlus 2 will not have that. It'll have an 810, and it'll have 4 gigs of LPDDR4. Because it has to. Is 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 phone memory getting out of hand? Like, is that... That's gotta be a straw poll, guys. Straw poll! Phone storage is... We should get straw poll as a sponsor. Open. We're always using it. I love that site. Do they even... We're probably a huge percentage of their bandwidth. Do they even advertise? Strawpool? Yeah. Probably not. I, I don't even know. Like, it's just this dude. What is their monetization model? Like, it's... App created by Dander. It's not a difficult thing. Yeah, I guess that's... Like, we could just make our own. I guess we could. If we really wanted to. I don't want to. No. That hard. Yeah. Um, I think that's the reason why we use it, is because it's easy and everything else might exist, but there's no point looking for it because this one exists. Turn it. Alright. Now, I know a lot of you have bought the shirt, but I would like you to resist the urge to vote for Turnip this time. For those of you who don't and know about I this... For wow. And it's winning. We're going to have a moment of silence to appreciate your disrespect. <laughs> It's winning by a, so much. Luke, you're a lot of things to me, okay? You're an employee. You know, you're a friend. You're a fellow you're, dildo racer. You're a fellow dildo racer. <laughs> yeah! You're a colleague. You know, you're... And you just... You can't respect me enough to not vote for Turnip. <laughs> Wrecked. Uh, I can't... Oh, my goodness. Shut up. Oh, this tab needs to go away now. It's like, Norton, security, Shaw security, we're everything secure. Oh my god, I have a touchpad! I can't close the dialogue and hit the exit fast enough. But Linus, this Leave action's this required. Page. There was threats detected. Like, your Norton security key ran out. So you need to buy one. That's a threat. Jeez. May so I offer for, you a Norton removal tool? For those of you who aren't aware, we actually have a Vote for Turnip shirt coming out. I haven't bought one of these yet. i got to get on that. No. We're not expecting this to be like the most popular shirt we've ever done because it's basically just an inside joke for the WAN Show viewers who are not even, I don't think, the majority of our viewers. It's just no. you guys who watch WAN Show because uh, we, don't, we don't refer to turnips anywhere else. Nope. So I think a lot of people, when I'm... like, what the hell is this shirt? The thing with the body paint? Is that out yet? I'm not yet. A lot of people are going to be super duper confused. I think oh, everyone's going to be a little confused. Yeah. But we are finally doing that, um, that, that... <laughs> 
new office crowdfunding campaign thing where we committed to me wearing body paint in a video. I think that's the last, second last one. Second last one. There's one more. You know what? I don't think I've received your uh, Daniel Radcliffe Harry Potter. I'm actually so stoked for that. What I do have, though, is I have oh, the God. chalkboard sticker oh, cool. of the speech bubble. Yeah. So we can actually say whatever we want. <laughs> it's going to start with Wingardium, get the F back to work, Luke. But then it can... But we could change it. That's cool. He could cast all kinds of spells. <laughs> we should have that. Avatica, but... stop slacking. <laughs> that would kill me. But not... But um, tell me this. <laughs> when you're slacking, can you really tell the difference between slacking Luke wow. and dead Luke? Wow. Wow. Is there resurrection? There is, but you can, when you get resurrected in the Harry Potter universe, you don't really like have your soul. You know, you live in a picture frame, I think. No, 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 that's not resurrection. Oh, you're talking about a horcrux. No, you have to split uh, your soul prior to dying. So your then, soul is still alive in, like, you know, no, someone's what, dildo one of or the something. Three there's there's the soul wand. dildo. There's the, the there's the wand. There's the cape, and there's something else, isn't there? And the third the one, the Deathly Hallows. Yeah. Doesn't that one bring someone back to life? And doesn't someone do it? And then the person is like, oh, not I, the I don't same. remember. It's been a while. I'm not I'm not up on my Harry Potter stuff. It's been a long time. I loved those books, but it's been a long time. Does anyone remember? Uh, I don't know. Everyone's don't just know. talking about dildos. Yeah, everyone's just talking about dildos in Twitch chat. Yeah, chats. dildo. Um, what were we even talking someone about? Someone should make, right, like, the after Stropple. reading Giga Dildo, someone should make, like, Gundam Wing inspired. Inspired dildos? Yeah. That sounds extraordinarily uncomfortable. Well, you could make it. Or you could just have, like, a dildo collection. You wouldn't actually have to use them, I guess. That's true. Like, if you were, like, a dildo I'm aficionado. Sure someone would use it. I'm sure someone has a dildo collection, too. I'm sure tons of people have dildo collections. Well, no, but I mean, like, just a collection, like, on display. Like, oh, just... with, like, zero intent of using? Yeah, yeah. I'm sure someone out there just collects dildos. Yeah, probably. So has phone memory gotten out of hand? We've got Turnip running away with 42% of the vote. 30% of you are saying no. Bring, bring on the memory. I'd love to have more RAM in my phone. What I want to know is how many people even have Chrome on their phones? Why do they need so much memory? Just kidding. Sorry, Chrome. That was a cheap shot. Um, oh, probably tons. But how many people really have that much stuff open at a time on their phones to the point where you would actually run out of three or even two gigs of memory without getting to the point where you've got so much background crap running that it's draining your battery life to the point where you can... Like, I have... My phone use habits have actually overshot modern tech modern technology yeah i just tried to double tap this um my phone habits have overshot most modern flagship smartphones in terms of battery capacity because using the droid turbo has made me just take for granted that i can just do whatever i want on my phone and i'm gonna have like 20 percent, 15 percent left at the end of the day even when i use it really hard so the lg g4 like i would make it but I had one really long day where I both got up early and I had to work really late when I didn't make it. And so using something like the S6 Edge, like really using it, I almost, I very rarely make it through the day. Today I'm going to make it. Um, and using the iPhone 6 uh, when I was doing my Apple Watch review was actually really tough because combining the fact that the iPhone 6's battery really isn't that great with the fact that all of a sudden now I've got Bluetooth on all the time because I've got it paired to a watch, um, I made it through, I think, I think the first two days in a row, I didn't make it through the day. I don't even 6. want to keep using this. There's huge problems with this thing. I need to reformat it for one, but <laughs> I don't get notifications at all unless the screen is on, which is why I need to reformat right. it. Right. But there's there's other various reasons it's not really that big of a deal. But the reason why I'm being so reluctant to give up on it is every other phone option that I have will make it through six hours of a day. Right. Yeah, the Z3 is not bad. It's got like, what, a 3,000 mAh battery? The battery battery? pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Um, G4 is another one that like I did okay with, but I'm really excited right now about the S6 Active. Yeah, do you have that? I, I saw do. That, that yeah, looks super it's cool. It's not on me right now, but I'm <laughs> I'm trying to pump out my Apple Watch review so that like I've still got a few more things I want to observe about it. Um, so I'm trying to pump that out because 
I will be completely changing gears and I will be switching to the S6 Active and the Pebble Time, which also just arrived. So I'll be going Apple ecosystem to Android plus something else, not in an ecosystem at all, and having those two experiences back to back, mm -hmm. which is part of what I love about being a tech reviewer. Just trying these things. It's really nice. And I must admit. And and having having that getting that perspective. Because before um well, also, when I was a fair bit younger, I succumbed much more to the, uh, I, I call this out all the time, the just being angry about purchasing decisions. Well, people online will just fight because they're like, I bought this thing and I need to justify my purchase, so screw you. Yeah. That's where I see a lot of that. Fanboy wars. Yeah, exactly. Um, but being able to try everything, you start to realize that there's usually pros and cons to literally everything and it's yep. kind of just fine as long as it works for you it's very rare that we come up with something that is just unequivocally bad like just terrible and no one should buy it and like the core effects like the like the core effects oh well okay what we can say about the core effects is that it's early early days for that technology yeah and that you just tape an xbox controller to your chest and that and that um there is something to be said for more interactivity with games. That's true. It's just that that product isn't it. No. <laughs> um, oh, oh, you know the Arag or the Arag or whatever it is? Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. The Arag, though? Yeah. So we might be able to get a sample. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I still, I'm very interested in force feedback vests. Yeah. Just, the core effects was just not good. Yeah, you've been doing, like, all the, like, weird stuff lately. Like, that 3D scanner, the yeah. core effects thing. It, it might, is it even refreshing to go back into a keyboard for a change? It's, honestly, uh, I've been looking at it and, like, this is going to sound a little bit bad because I, especially when I first started, I was, like, all about keyboards. Yeah. There hasn't been a lot of major changes. The MX Board 6.0, is that what it's called? Yeah. MX Board 6.0 does have a completely redesigned actual electronic, electrical structure it to does, it. It does, it does, but I need, to do, I need to do some testing to it's see the wave if of the future. a noticeable difference. Tell I me I also this. want to give it to Ed. Yeah. And see if he feels a difference, because Ed's like this crazy Counter-Strike player. So like if he if he notices like tiny amounts of difference then that's super. Cool. My understanding is he's actually pretty good, but I've never played with him. I've never played, played with, with him either. Oh, okay. But like he super knows what he's talking about. Yeah, he claims his rank is good, and he uploaded some footage in one of our reviews where he seemed to be poning dudes or something. So I'm like, okay, sure, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Um, speaking of poning dudes, EA will pay a sixty million dollar fine for the unauthorized use of names and portraits of athletes. Oh, right. So, let's go ahead and now do Game Shock. Uh, yeah, original original link here is from Game Shock. Now, I'm going to go ahead. I'm a, I'm a I'm a leap all over this and say uh, this is not even the like the the the, the crowning head of the tip of the iceberg that is the injustice of um, what do we even call it? We can't call it professional athletics in the United States because they aren't getting paid. Um, so, <clears throat> but someone's getting paid. It just isn't the athlete. So the whole the whole system down there, where you're trading experience for uh, someone else making a, a ton of money, like basically you're. It's like it's like asking people to buy lotto tickets, kind of thing. You're like you're taking their money for them to have a chance to win big and make it to the NFL or the NBA. And we're giving them nothing in return but the opportunity to do that. What are you that. talking about? You know that college athletes don't get paid, right? This is NBA. This is this is NBA? Isn't it? No. Uh, so American football and men's blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so those affected are current and former college athletes. Oh, it, it says here names and likenesses in EA games such as Madden and NBA Live. So it's currently awaiting final approval from a U.S. district judge. Um, claims have been made against the NCAA, EA, and Collegiate Licensing Company, the nation's leading collegiate trademark licensing and marketing firm. So about 16% of eligible athletes for the $40 million settlement, including EA and the CLC, have filed claims. 24% of the eligible athletes for the $20 million settlement against the NCAA have filed. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of pitiful. 
Um, the athletes yeah. will get <clears throat> most will get a thousand bucks in compensation, and some will get uh, sixty seven hundred or more. Or at all athletes who made a valid claim will receive at least seventy four dollars. And that's that's pretty. Uh, that's was me. Pretty. That's pretty. Thanks. That's pretty shameful. The whole situation is really gross and really ugly. I don't. Oh. Madden and some NBA games have college teams or okay. draft boards you can use. So, so there you go, uh, Nick Light to the rescue. Thanks, but Nick. the point is that it's, yeah, it's maybe a step in the right direction. I mean, acknowledging that these people should be paid for whatever, like the fact that they have enough notoriety that someone wants to use their picture and include them in a video game should be worth something. You can't just be like, sorry kid, you know, uh, that's, that's tough the way that worked out for you. But hey, at least you got a shot to make it to the big time. I mean... <laughs> I mean, you That's can, a brutal. and you know, the, the thing is, is like, there's all these arguments for this, you know, like I, I, like you can make the argument, well, the kids knew what they were getting themselves into. They knew they weren't going to be paid. You know what? Bullshit. Because yeah, they, they knew it, but let's face it, you know, people going into the system aren't really given a choice. Even if they, even if they know it, and a lot of the time, people that sold themselves into slavery knew that they were selling themselves into slavery. Yeah, uh, I mean, and you know, getting into like, speaking of injustices, you know, Native Americans here, and, and I don't remember what the new politically correct term is. So I, I frankly, I don't care. First Nations, Native Americans, whatever it is, the people who were here already sold their land. A lot of them, not all. And so, did they did they understand the terms of the contract? Probably not. <sighs> Was that taking advantage of a situation? Probably. Um, I'm not. I'm not a legal court, and I'm not really going to get into a whole lot of depth with that. But the point is, just because someone agrees to something doesn't necessarily make it right. That's my point. Um, so I yeah, I really think the whole college sports situation is really crappy. I, I hate that a bunch of you know rich people are making a shed load of money on people who aren't getting paid to like appear in games on TV when people are buying tickets to attend these games. It's like it's like yeah, you should come be my backup singer at you know Britney Spears concert because just the fact that your face is there is like good enough. You should be pleased for the opportunity to be on stage with. You know, me, Britney Spears, don't worry about getting paid about it. It's like, you know what, Britney, you can afford to pay your backup dancers. And, and, and backup dancers do get paid. I'm not drawing a parallel here necessarily. And Brit Britney's probably doing fine. Yeah, and Britney's fine. In terms fine. of that conduct. Or maybe not, I don't know. Who I'm, knows? I'm not, I don't actually pay much attention to what Britney Spears is up to these days. Nope. Nope. Is she still making music? I legitimately don't know. Um, should we do a good news topic? Yeah, let's do... Oh, well, I guess that wasn't it. The next neither one there. Neither was the next wow, one. Wow, neither was the next one. Uh, neither is that one. Yeah. There we go! XCOM 2 Creative Director says PC gaming is in a golden age. Alright, so original article here is from PCGamer.com. There you go, and that's an ad. Hooray! There we go. Wow, I wonder if they are getting some money from, like, Path of Exile. Path of Exile? Right yeah. Now. I don't know. It's I wonder if they could potentially put more ads on the page. Like, if they replace this main one right here, that could work. Yeah, with, like, Path of Exile? Yeah. I wonder if this highlights thing is Path of Exile. It makes it really hard to... Because I like to scroll with the arrow keys. Yes. And I literally cannot find anywhere on this page where it's not the hand. <laughs> How do I click anywhere? What's going to open if I click this? Oh no, it's okay. That's weird. Okay, my mouse pointer is broken. It's okay. So XCOM um, 2 will be exclusive to the PC for a yeah, okay, it's variety of bad. reasons. I'm doing it on my computer. So okay, nice. okay, okay, okay. Well, we won't give them too much crap about it. Hey, they got to make money, and it ain't easy as a print publication these days. Totally, totally get that. Um, so what do we have to say about that? Uh, cool. I don't know. It's not that surprising, to be completely honest. With the wave of next-gen console stuff, like, not to PC Master Race like crazy, but this is something that I've talked about before. When Xbox 360 and PS3 came out, those were actually rather impressive. When they sold it to you, they were taking a little bit of a loss, and there was kind of an understanding that most people knew that, like, 
okay, the controller doesn't cost however much money. The controller's not going to cost 60 bucks. So you buy the console, it only comes with one controller. You buy one more, maybe three more controllers and a bunch of games, they make their money back. But at the beginning, especially with like PlayStation 3, they were really not making money off selling those consoles because they were actually good at the time. <laughs> the next-gen consoles were like... They were making a fairly okay amount of money off each console that was sold, and they were kind of not great. And a lot of the better experiences are coming to PC. And a lot of really competitive stuff is is PC, if you think about it. Look at League of Legends and Dota. Yeah, That's so huge right now. The competitive scene, that giant arena in China. Um, League of Legends has its own convention now. Twitch is mostly PC stuff. Twitch is huge. Twitch has their own convention now. Like PC gaming and yeah, I heard about that actually. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. PC gaming's rocking it. I don't know. Indie games are huge on PC. Yeah, the, the there's a few very specific indie games that are starting to sell on Wii U better than Steam, which is really interesting. I mean, the funny thing is the big the big argument against PC a lot of the time is it's expensive, but it's in my mind, that. the PC is the least expensive. It used to be. It did used to be. To be fair, be. it used to be very expensive. It used to be, but that's the thing I don't get, is it's that it it hasn't been that way for a really long time. No. Because it, and Especially with is, game costs. And this is this is something that I think a lot of people a lot of people kind of forget. It's the whole you know what? It actually there's an interesting parallel to the way that our videos get released now. Where they come out a week early on Vessel, which is a paid platform, and then they come a week later on YouTube, which is not a paid platform. It's an ad-supported platform, so you can watch for free. And so people kind of are like, oh, PC gaming's expensive, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, hold on a second. One of the great things about PC gaming is DirectX, is the fact that PC games are backwards compatible for years, sometimes even decades. Backwards and, and forwards compatibility between a PC and a game is amazing. So once you've made an investment in a PC, you can go back and play an enormous catalog of amazing gaming experiences on the absolute freaking cheap. Like you can whether like free. it's yeah whether it's picking up used games on Amazon or in the the bin at like I I was at a DVD rental store last week uh, when I was over on the island okay yeah where I I guess they don't have internet there um, and so they had like they had like old games on a shelf for sale that no one was renting anymore because does anyone rent games anymore? anyway um, actually yes so they had they had old games on a shelf and they had some PC ones though. Whoa. Yeah, so I was just like, oh yeah, but that's like really cheap because like two bucks or whatever. Um, so that's a really cool thing about the PC. And then the other thing is that I think a lot of people forget that you don't have to buy a new computer. That too. Scrapyard Wars. Trying to Wars. spread that message with Scrapyard Wars. Yeah, that was like the whole point of Scrapyard Wars for us. It's like. You can build, like, an awesome gaming computer for $300. The combo, what was it, the combo $380 one, where we put yeah. our two computers together, that one was actually sick. Yeah. And, like, actually destroyed a lot of modern benchmarks. So, yeah. And another thing is, you legit don't have to spend any money at all. Uh, what, I think Dota's free. Pretty sure Dota's free. TF2 is free. League of Legends is free. If you just get, not to toot EA's horn, but if you just get an Origin account and just idle it, they just give you games. I got Crusader No Remorse. On the house. EA's on the house. They just hand out games every once in a while. I have wanted to play that. I actually bought a copy of that game back when my home computer was like a 386 or like a Pentium 75 they're super or some old. crap. Yeah, they're super yeah. old games, but honestly sometimes super old games are Pentium really good. Something. I can't remember. I had like anyway, I didn't have some kind of something. I needed I, I wasn't super tech savvy cuz I was like 9 or whatever. However old I was at the time, I bought a copy of that game at London Drugs and I never got to play it. So, I as soon as I saw that was like a free offer on Origin, I was like, <laughs> yeah. I am going to play this this time. <laughs> That's awesome. And someone brought up those are crappy games. They kind of are, but they're zero dollars. And they're a full game that doesn't have microtransactions. Yeah, and Team Fortress 2 isn't a crappy game. And Team Fortress 2 is great. League of Legends is really fun. Dota is also free. I mean, we did talk last week on WAN Show about how both of us liked TF2 before it went free to play. And I agree. 
but but it's free, which is good for some people. I don't know. Yeah. All right. So uh, I still feel a little bit gypped that I bought it, and now it's a free to play game. I know you didn't mean this because you probably don't know. Uh, this is something that I actually didn't know until recently. Gypped is actually uh, a racial slur. What? Yeah, it refers to gypsies. So I'm sure you wow. used it unintentionally. And I just wanted to call out, we have nothing against gypsies here at Linus Media Group at all. I had no idea. Uh, most people don't. A lot of those, like I know the actual term and... Wow. Yep. Wow. All right. And, and the, uh, I actually... I have one of my best friends has heavy gypsy lineage. So I actually didn't find out until someone else in my high school like humanities class got screamed at by the teacher for saying it not realizing it and i was like sitting there going like oh i say that a lot <laughs> that could have just as easily been me because i had no idea like and it's one of those like my dad was from a different generation like yeah, 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 my yeah. dad said it all the time like you know, oh, that I've deal heard was so uh, many people say it. I know it's one of those things where it managed to make itself into a social norm, but probably shouldn't. And more awareness of it is probably better. Wow. Um, so yeah, maybe avoid that one. Yeah. Um, no, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The more you know. <laughs> Uh, so, <laughs> Microsoft is cutting 7,800 jobs from its hardware division. Original oh, article God. here is from The Verge. That's funny. Um, yeah, so they write off $7.6 billion from the Nokia deal and announce 7,800 job cuts. So, uh, <clears throat> CEO didn't want to waste any time dropping the company's previous focus on devices and services <laughs> after he was appointed as chief executive last year. So that is, uh, it's, you know, there is something to be said for working for a small company the way we do, where everyone has a face and a name. If you fired 7,800 people, that would be impossible. Yeah. And like, if I was just like, yeah, we're going to move in a different direction. We're not going to, we're not going to, like, okay, let's say I did do something drastic. Because you could even look at Linus Media Group as like, like a micro example of a company. Like, we're a small company, but like... You know, we've got video production, and then we've got, like, our own branded content that we sell advertising against, and then we've got our website, and then we've got, like, um, I'm sure we do other things. Okay, we mostly just make videos, but, and have a website. <laughs> but the point is, if one day I was like, okay, we're not gonna do, we're not gonna do, like, paid video production anymore, like, uh, Retail Edge, for example, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Retail Edge, but... I host some of the video content on Intel Retail Edge. It's completely a closed ecosystem, but like you'll see me over there. And sometimes it's very similar to content that we also release on YouTube, but it's ad supported. Anyway, if I was like, okay, we're not gonna do that anymore. It, it would be like one person, 60% of whose time I would reallocate to like something else. Or more. Or if I was like, okay, we're not gonna have a website anymore. You wouldn't have any trouble filling your days with things to do. Literally nothing would change. In so, day -day hours. so like, I would probably just be like slightly more productive in the ways of making videos. But can you imagine if we had eight thousand people working on like, you know, the Linus Tech Tips game or something like that? And you were just like, nah. And like the board of directors boots me out, and they're like, Linus Tech Tips game? Are you serious? Who's this Linus guy? He doesn't even work here anymore. Blat. That's how easily it can happen. It's like, yeah. you know, strategic changes to the company. It doesn't matter how good of a job you were doing. Isn't that crazy? That is kind of crazy. And, like, I fully understand the bail. I fully understand them being like, yeah, maybe we shouldn't be making phones so much. Yeah. Like, I get it. But, damn, that's a lot of people. Yeah, so blah, 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 this change will enable us to deliver better products and services that our customers love at a more rapid pace. Um, yeah, so, I mean, acquisitions, man. Tell me something. Yeah. If Linus Media Group got acquired, which is not happening, every time I bring this up on my end show, I feel like I have to say it, it's not happening. Um, would you worry about, like, losing your job? I would move to Norway. You'd move to Norway. Why Norway? 
I liked Norway. Okay. I guess that's as good a reason. I really don't like the heat. Canada is way too hot for me. Right. I was in Norway close to winter. I think it was technically winter, but it wasn't like the cold part of winter yet. Yeah. And it was wonderful. That said, it's pretty nice here that time of year, too. Yeah. I know. But, like, Just I saying. don't think it gets that hot in Norway. No. Or like, Iceland. You know Iceland what? would be fantastic. It's not supposed to get... I've never been there. It's not supposed to get that hot here. That's true. But this summer has been breaking all kinds of records. We've got fires all over the place. For the last, like, four days, I haven't been able to take my baby outside because there's, like, uh, forest fires and all this particulate matter in the air. And, like, like we look out the window here, and it's kind of like it's foggy all the time. Like, it's actually... It's pretty sketch yeah. at the moment. Scandinavia. There we go. Scandinavia. I would move to... Just somewhere in uh, Scandinavia. I might not be using the right word, because there's a lot of different words for, like, I know. including different Because, like, there's the Nordics, and then there's, yeah. like, Scandinavia. I think and there's I think they're both more. regions of multiple countries in that area. The point is, we love you all. Great hockey yeah. players. Um, Watch Dogs Backlash started a policy change at... Ubisoft says a CEO. So original article here is from Kit Guru. Did it because it didn't really seem to change much. Well, they haven't done anything that bad recently. Wasn't that Unity was after pretty Watch bad? Dogs? I think they were around the same time. Okay. Yeah, I mean to call it just the Watch Dogs debacle or just the Unity debacle, that was like the digging time, you know? Yeah. It's like, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it was like... There was which a, stroke of the shovel? It was like... <laughs> Watch Dogs was like summer and then Unity was like winter, right? I... I you know, I frankly don't remember. It Having, was like late summer and early winter or late fall and late summer or something. I don't remember, but I think... Yeah, I think you're I'll right. look it they, up, were, they were close. I don't think they were the exact same time, but I think they were close. I could totally be wrong. Let's see. Okay, November 11th, 2014 was yeah. Assassin's Creed. And then May 27th, 2014 was Watch Dogs. So June, July, August, September, October, November. So they were seven months apart. Um, oh, it's funny that they would specifically call out the Watch Dogs one. Because they were both pretty, pretty, yeah, pretty they debacle really were. Uh, well, anyway, anyway, so let's, let's, let's call that whole time period the Watch Dogs time. Yeah. Um, sure. Do you not, do you not think it's fair to, I just achieved my move goal. Yeah, Apple Apple watches. Uh, I was actually sitting writing my review, and I I was playing with a feature that I hadn't used, which is like a workouts feature or something like that. So you're like, I'm gonna go vigorously walk, and I'm gonna I want to burn this many calories. Let me know when I'm done, which is like, I don't know. It feels kind of backwards. Couldn't I just... Like it should just happen? Yeah, couldn't I just go for a 30-minute walk and then it could tell me how many calories I burned and then I could be a super smart person and extrapolate from there? I, I don't know. Anyway, the point is, while I was sitting writing my review, I realized that I had reached like 4% of my goal of walking and I was well, there's, literally there's, sitting at a computer. There's that problem with Fitbit too. Like it'll think you're like running potentially if you're like shaking a drink. This is funny. You have reached your move goal. Having an active day has definitely paid off, Linus. Screw off. Like, just screw off. My Apple Watch review is, uh, like, I I am working really hard. I've actually spent a few hours writing it so far. And that's that's not including all the time I've spent with the device and any yeah. notes that I've been making. Uh, I, I'm Like, that's a few hours of just writing, like, like 1,500 words. Like, it's not even a lot. It's just rearranging and figuring out what's going to go in and what's going to get cut because I've only got like eight minutes to keep the viewer's attention in, in our format. And I have spent a long time on this trying to avoid turning it into a rant. And I reread what is about a 70% completion script and boy, is it ever negative. This is a super stupid product. Everything that I thought was wrong with it is wrong with it and more that I couldn't have possibly predicted. Like, I'm not going to give away everything, but because I want you guys to watch the review. But <laughs> <laughs> Someone in chat was like, Apple Watch equals Ellen Pow. Aww. Well, at least the Apple Watch didn't sue its former employer. Ooh. We might need to be careful. Leading to We a... might be under fire. She did, though. It's a fact. That's true. <laughs> like, what am I supposed to say? I don't know. I just don't want to get flamed for defamation or something. Um, 
Well, the thing about the like the thing about the Apple Watch is that it it doesn't even do like I, I don't I, know if I mind the home screen. I'm considering a dedicated video about why the Apple Watch is objectively the worst possible smartwatch, where I just take one page of Apple.com, which is all the things the Apple Watch does, and point out all the problems with every single one of those it's things. It's an interesting idea. It's pretty brutal. Like One thing I've been playing with lately, this is, this is going to be a weird conversation that we usually have not on camera, yeah, but sure. I'm going to go for it, is doing things in the review instead of just talking, like with the structure sensor. Instead of just yeah. being like, this mode worked pretty well, B-roll, blah, 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 blah. I was like, yeah. okay, let's scan Terra and let's scan a room, let's do that kind of yeah. stuff. So it could be cool. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's like, here, here's a stupid thing. I, they this, can't I, see this. I still have to figure it out. Well, they're still not going to be able to see that, so don't, don't worry too much about it. They'll, 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 they'll imagine it. So, there's a photos icon on the home screen, which, do you love how quickly. That was brutal. Do you love how quickly I did it turns that. I was off? Like, what? Yeah. It's like, I'm in the middle of stuff here. Like, can you not just turn off if immediately? You were, if thanks? you were looking for something, like, there's a lot of icons on the screen. If you're looking for something, you could have definitely lost it. It's gone. Wow. And it's gone. So I'm going to click on that. There's one picture on here, and I don't know why there's only one. I don't know why I can't browse the rest of my camera roll. Right. Like, I, and I'll, I'll figure it out before I publish the review. But there's another thing. Like, um, this is great. So. I don't expect. I know that Apple and Google aren't necessarily best of friends, so I don't expect, um, you know, Google Play Music to necessarily be supported with like a, 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 a music control corresponding app on the on the watch. I, I don't expect that. But you know, someone like and and I and I know that app support for the watch is coming. But that's not till the fall, and Apple expects you to buy this today. What about stuff like Sonos, which is like, you know, a very Apple-esque type company. Oh, they're, yeah. they're pretty aligned with the Apple way. Why is there absolutely no ability to control anything other than the iTunes music player? Not only that, but when music is playing, like it is, it is straight up a bad music remote, which is one of the big things that I use a smartwatch for. Yeah. And Pebble's best for this because of the tactile buttons. But I can live with Google's implementation because the first card on screen with an Android Wear device is always music playback control. So you swipe up, swipe right, I can do it without looking at it, and then it's four quadrants of the screen that, well, you wouldn't have any more than four quadrants no matter what, but uh, quadrants. it's quadrants of the screen that are volume up and down and forward and back for tracks, okay? So it's like you can actually do it without looking at it. The Apple Watch, you have to actually, like, navigate to music control. Are you for real? I mean, ugh. All right, so something, something, Ubisoft, back on topic. Um... Says they were they were uh, caught out by the complexity of the Watch Dogs project, the large open city environment, multiplayer rating feature, and second screen functionality. It's a real challenge to create those types of games when they come out, especially the first iterations. They're not perfect on everything, and it was maybe a bit too much for a first attempt. Um, and says that reactions to Watch Dogs uh, have re uh, to the demo fiasco, so that was where they changed the visual quality, have reshaped the company's approach to showing off pre-release games. So, cool. hasn't necessarily changed the approach to actually developing the games, but has definitely changed the They're approach to... They're just going to not show you something super shiny beforehand. Which, honestly, I'm cool with that. I want a realistic representation. That's why when, like... Oh, this was a big debate. Like, everywhere. Was when the Fallout 4 footage came out. People were like, oh, this game looks old, oh my god. And it's like, well, they didn't over-show you stuff. Yep. It's probably exactly what it's going to look like. It's not out yet. It could look worse. But I kind of doubt it, and it looks totally fine, so maybe we shouldn't hate on them for it, so that they don't try to fib in the future. I forget. I know we talked about this. Are you a Fallout person? Fallout? Yeah. Super. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. All right, so uh, this, our original source for the next one, is from UB Group, and it's funny, the good timing for this is really good, because we had actually mentioned last week that um, that Ubisoft's earnings on PC had really increased in the last couple of years to the point where it was like looking like a legitimate platform that they should probably spend some time didn't developing they say games for. A while ago, like yeah, we don't really make that much money on PC. 
Yep. So in uh, in the last quarter. Uh, so first quarter of 2015-2016 fiscal year, PlayStation 4 accounted for 27% of Ubisoft's game sales, which is actually really in, really interesting in itself that a next-gen console is uh, has overtaken PC. That's, uh, that's pretty incredible. PlayStation 4 really did win, didn't it? Yeah. Um, that said, Microsoft has stuff coming. They have cloud stuff coming that looks pretty bananas. It's just been coming for so long. Yeah, that all of a sudden that you, it's just kind of a mess at like this point. Like the dildo race. Like the dildo race. Stay tuned for the dildo race. What is a dildo race? You'll find out. Um, so the PlayStation 4 accounted for 27% with the PC at 23%. The X-Bone at 11% and the X360 and PS3 each at 11%. I'm the happy. Wii U at 3%. Blah. I'm happy that the they don't really do much for Wii U. I wish there. someone other than Nintendo could make a game for a Nintendo console. Indie, I mentioned this a little bit earlier. Indie games are getting much bigger on Wii U recently, which is pretty cool. Um, da, 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 da. it's interesting like great PC is doing awesome that's really good I find it interesting that PS4 is doing 27% Xbone is only doing 11 that's huge yeah poor Microsoft oh no maybe that's why they're trying to bring more stuff to PC because Xbox is failing I wonder if Xbox was doing a lot better if they would actually be pushing in the way that they are I do wonder it seems like they want two focus platforms yeah Maybe that's maybe that's what we're seeing, or maybe we're just seeing the results of a decision that was made a really long time ago. I mean, it's no secret that a modern AAA title takes years to develop. So that's true. There you go. Uh, oh, right, sponsors. Linda.com with absolutely no segue whatsoever. Linda.com because things that can take a little while but are extremely beneficial. Learning. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. Uh, okay, you should expand so, your knowledge. So, for those These Lamborghinis of, here. Wow. I'm not even that proud of this Lamborghini. I'm proud of the knowledge that I keep in this box. I get a new box every day. Every day I get a new box. And I read that box and I tell you guys about it. And he had to build a computer every day, but so I'm, that he could research things on lynda.com. I'm much more proud of that box day. than I am of, you know, this t-shirt for, that's actually, one. okay, whatever. lynda.com, the place to learn online. They've got experts. They've got video courses. They've got an app. Everyone has an app these You can days. make notes and then go back to those notes. You can see your notes on that video that you watch. You can make custom playlists. You can download them and watch them offline. You can share them with your friends. Boom. You, with your other friends on lynda.com. You could have like a lynda.com party. A team. Lynda.com should pay us for come. Well, they do pay us, but Lynda.com should pay us specifically for coming up with the idea of a Linda party. They should have. It's like Tupperware um, parties, but like learning. Can you limbo at the Linda party while you learn? I think you could. I think the idea is that everything at a Linda party should be a new and learning experience. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> the uh, the plan started only twenty five dollars a month. Head over to lynda.com slash wan show for the ten day all you can eat free trial. Uh, our other sponsor, are you done? It's ready. You're done. Yeah. All right. Our other sponsor is Squarespace, and we are putting them on the spot today. We are. Now, those of you who watch Wan Show regularly <laughs> and do actually watch the sponsor spot, sometimes <laughs> there are some hidden gems in them. <laughs> There was a gem two weeks ago where we thought Luke's mom's site was on Squarespace and but. it turned out that it wasn't and you guys rushing to check out Luke's mom's site uh, crashed it and that was a big problem. So Squarespace, um, because Luke told me it was on Squarespace, so then when I thought it crashed, I was like, holy crap, we crashed a Squarespace site. How did this even happen? Uh, it happened so because we didn't. It, we didn't. So Squarespace has state-of-the-art tools that make it easy to create your own beautiful, customizable website that works great on a phone, great on a computer, and starting at $8 a month has scalable plans that will keep your site up so you are not spending your time, you know, figuring out website development when actually what you want to do is do completely different things like, you know, sell your artsy craftsy things that you made or have a great looking portfolio. Well, we are going to try again. This time it really is on Squarespace and boom. How, how do I pronounce this? Cali, Cali Bags. Bags Online. So it has been ported to Squarespace. And accoutrement. 
And accoutrement. Scroll up. Oh, scroll up. There we go. So we can go to the store. We've got like tribal earrings or something. Yeah. The refined collection. The crochet cape. Wow, your your mom's really getting into the like. They make a lot of stuff. Interesting. Yeah. Double tassel. This is like some pretty artsy stuff going it on is. here. Yeah. The Renaissance bag. Wow, some of this stuff is not cheap. No. Interesting. Yeah. So is this all like handmade? It's all kind of a one off, yeah. Oh. That's I, see. I think why it's expensive. I don't understand like fashion or handmade things at all. Right. My stuff is like a graphics card. They made a lot of them and they all look the same. Right. <laughs> so, okay, we can. Hey, we can sort by rare finds and oddities. Oh, so like you could find this stuff? Rare finds. Okay. Like uh, sometimes they'll find something very interesting and then build something around it or on top of it or whatever to make it right more and better. Okay. So we can go to the blog. And thankfully, I remember the first time we did this where we legitimately had the whole WAN show audience bum rush a Squarespace site <laughs> to prove that it wouldn't go down. <laughs> the first time I was nervous. Today I was mostly not nervous. I was only a little bit nervous because, like, you never know. What can go wrong will go wrong. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, no, the site is snappy and responsive, and that is your dog. Yep. Yeah. I love your dog. So this is this is Chloe, yeah. And Chloe is super clever. Uh, she can play a game where you go, Pew! and then yeah. she like lays over and pretends to be dead. My favorite one is if you put a tubware on the floor with the opening up, she'll put all of her feet in it and kind of sit there. If you put it with the opening down, she'll walk up and play the drums on it. If you sit forward on the couch, she'll come up behind you and scratch your back. If you sneeze, she'll go get you a tissue. It's kind of fantastic. My mom's a crazy dog trainer. So yeah, your mom does all kinds of things. Evidently, like this, everything from apparently. dog training to to creating a bags and accoutrements, like accoutrements, acc uh, whatever, <laughs> uh, a bags bags company. So uh, yeah. there you go. Huge thanks to uh, whoops. Huge thanks to uh, Luke for helping his mom. She did require a little bit of help, right? A little bit. Okay. Not and much. huge thanks to uh, to Luke's mom for and actually deciding not to use what she, whatever she was using before. I can't remember. And getting on Squarespace like her son advised her to. I have to thank Travis as well. Travis helped me a bunch there. Yeah. Oh man. So I mean, uh, there you go. Yeah. All right. So this is interesting. Apple Watch demand has apparently fallen, now, quote unquote, a lot. Are you calling this out in your review or no? Uh, I may talk about it a little bit, but honestly, I think um, I think this is a bit of a sensationalist headline. The Apple Watch is in a really weird spot where it's a first generation product that has a new operating system that was announced but isn't coming until the fall. and. It, that is quite expensive. Like this is like an eight hundred dollar watch, which is to me absolutely ridiculous. That's far more than I have ever spent on the smartwatch three that I was like, reviewing was one hundred and thirty five bucks or something. I think you said it was one hundred and eighty on 85 Amazon or something. On it was promo. It was under two hundred dollars for a long time. I and don't know if it still is, but the whole time I was writing the review, which was like a month. It was that price. It has literally all the same functionality. Probably better. Um, and for some things, yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyway, it looks like there's no been... This is based on US numbers only, but it looks like there has been a significant decrease in demand uh, in the month of June. So I don't know if I want to read too much Isn't that into also it. also just a little bit how products go, though? And and that is another thing to consider. It's, it's a little bit just kind of how things go. Especially Not, a fairly niche kind of product. Yeah, I mean Apple doesn't want it to be niche. They want it to be like That's true. the next thing that absolutely everyone has. And you know, they've done it they've done a really good job of some aspects of it. I just um oh this is interesting. Uh Slice Intelligence says sixty six percent have been the least expensive sport model of the sales so far, and just 2,000 units of the Apple Watch Edition have been sold in the U.S. Honestly, I'm surprised was, they sold 2,000 of them. I was going to say, wasn't the Edition, like, stupid expensive? I'm not surprised that they didn't sell that many. Yeah, $10,000. Yeah, oh, some of them are more. Really? Yeah, some of them are more. It depends on which one you want. Like, if you want, like, the rose gold one with this, or the yellow gold one with that, and they've got different straps and stuff like that. 
it's 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 all it's all kind of ridiculous. That's so nuts. tell us this. Let's straw pull the crap out of this. Straw pull. Straw pull. I wonder if straw pull knows who we are. I have no idea. I hope so. So our P. Okay, what's going on with the Apple Watch? People Whoa, there's are, a new version of Strapple coming. People are cluing in... How do you spell cluing? Oh, no, no E. Cluing in that it's not that great. Natural um, sales decay after like a, a big hype launch. Um, what are some other options? Turnip. Turnip has to be an option. You know what? Let's just, let's just go with uh, you know natural sales decay after launch. Or people are cluing in that it's not that great. I want to hear what you guys think. And I am posting that in the Twitch chat now. Whoops, that didn't work. I did not. I did not go in that thing. Don't those. Um. Okay, so let's move on to our next topic while people vote on that particular one right there. AMD has lowered... The, there's all bad news out of AMD right now. AMD lowers revenue expectations because of poor APU sales. You know what the funny thing is? Is Intel's, like, doing the same thing. And, like, it, it all comes down to that whole... The enthusiasts are telling you what they want. The enthusiasts are the only ones that get, like, excited about products and buy them for fun. And we keep not listening to them. We keep making APUs and we keep making... You but know. this one's the exact same speed, but that's okay because the graphics core is awesome. But the power consumption is so much better. Yay. So uh, poor APU sales and more more bad news out of AMD. It just cost them, what was it, 33 million? million. It just cost them 33 million to cancel their 20 nanometer, hold on. Their 20 nanometer commitments with uh, TSMC, if I recall correctly. AMD officially cancels 20 nanometer chips. Ooh. And uh, hold on, original article here is from Kit Guru. I can't remember who it's with. So this is like a big, big problem. As a blah, 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 blah. AMD did not reveal when it plans to roll out its first chips to be made using Global Foundry's 14 nanometer FinFET manufacturing technology or TSMC's 16 nanometer FinFET. However, it is evident that the cancellation of Amur and Nolan means that AMD will have nothing new to offer for tablets uh, based on up the upcoming Windows 10 in the coming months. Ah, uh, blah, 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 blah. So AMD will not retreat not as a result of such decision by TSMC and blah, 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 etc., etc., etc. So, yeah, TSMC has designed its 20 nanometer manufacturing technology primarily for a mobile system on chips, and that means AMD will not produce a single chip using the CLN20 SOC, whereas NVIDIA will only use it for one SOC, the Tegra X1. So it's, it's really interesting the way the technology is changing where you have to kind of decide as you're developing a new manufacturing process, are we optimizing for power consumption or are we optimizing for bigger chips or smaller chips or, or, or whatever else the case may be. And the fact that AMD no longer owns its own fabs means that someone else's strategic direction in terms of developing manufacturing process um, will affect AMD's ability to bring certain products to market. I'm just trying to find the uh, the quote. Real men have fabs. Um, Who said this? That I totally was, remember uh, this. But someone Sanders the third. I can't. It was one of AMD's. Uh, hold on. Yep, Jerry Sanders the third said, "Real men have fabs," um, and that that didn't work for AMD. They just couldn't handle the financial burden of continuing to develop new manufacturing processes, and they are now just kind of at the mercy of outside The whole Twitch chat is saying real men have fire poles. Real men have fire poles. Real firemen have fire poles. Some. Some, except the ones that don't, because... My even, brother's hall does not have one. Even for firefighters, like, a fire pole is not necessarily faster. What if you just had a single-story building? And you didn't have to go downstairs or poles at all. <laughs> or just, like, optimize your building layout. A little bit. Alright, so IBM has unveiled the world's first 7 nanometer chip. 
with a silicon germanium channel and EUV lithography, IBM crosses the 10 nanometer barrier. This is some next level stuff this right now. This is actually now. insane. Because for the first time in as long as I can sort of conveniently remember, Intel is not completely alone out in front leading the charge. I thought you were going to say a uh, single digit nanometer. Well, that that's definitely the first time nuts. ever. So, yeah, we have no idea on costs. We have no idea on timelines. I don't even care. They did it. They did That's it. That's super cool. So they were working with Global Foundries. Remember, this is the spin-off from AMD, yeah. now separate company. They worked with Samsung, State University of New York, and various equipment suppliers, and produced the first 7 nanometer chip with functional transistors. Commercial chips remain at least two years away, which is probably optimistic. This, I'm sure, like 99% sure this won't happen, because IBM is like super not a consumer-facing company. But would it be interesting in like six years from now if you were installing IBM CPUs and computers? I I I I don't see it. You know, no, I don't no, see it. Because they're not a consumer facing company. I don't think they but. yeah, I don't think they even want to. I don't any. think they want to either. They spun off their 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 chip manufacturing to global foundries. Yeah. Like they, they just seem to want no part of it other nope. than They just want to do industrial enterprise stuff. Which like Apparently, they're doing very well with that, so sure. Yeah, so uh, blah, blah, blah. It's still important since it's the first commercial. E yeah, it's, okay, so it doesn't matter that we're not going to see chips based on it for quite a while because it's, it's the first commercially viable sub-10 nanometer FinFET logic chip uh, using silicon germanium as a channel material rather than just silicon. So silicon's days have been numbered for a long time. Yeah. It looks like they're officially over. Um, due to in the incredibly tight stacking, so this is a 30 nanometer transistor pitch, IBM claims a surface area reduction of close to 50% over today's 10 nanometer processes. Now this is something that most people don't know. Not all X nanometer, whether we're talking about 20 nanometer, or 34 nanometer, or whatever, not all manufacturing processes at each node are created equal. There are other factors at play here that can affect the density of the chip, the yeah. efficiency of the transistors, the heat output, and all those kinds of things. So it's not enough to just create a seven nanometer chip. That doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna get a 50% size reduction. You have to actually work on other things as well. So higher electron mobility is part of what makes silicon germanium more suitable than silicon for smaller transistors. And, I mean, a lot of this is, like, super technical details that might not have too much relevance to most of our viewers, but the point is, it's not over. The race to smaller and more efficient and more powerful is not over for at least a couple of years. We are going to see significant improvements over the next couple of years because the technology barriers continue to be broken down. Thank you, IBM and Global Foundries and Fantastic. Samsung and all those folks. Super awesome. When I read this in the in the thing, I was like, oh, this is going to be a rumor mill site, and it's going to be crap, and there's going to be no actual information, it's going to be some dude, like, plotting a graph and being like, they probably are doing this right now, and then it wasn't, and that's super fantastic. Microsoft presents Groove Music Streaming Service. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll pull this off of Microsoft.com slash Groove dash music. That seems like as good a primary source as you can have for something. Huh, the Apple Watch says it's time to stand up. So it's funny, it goes from telling me that I'm exercising. You're doing a great job, Linus. Good job moving today, yeah. To telling me that I need to stand up and move a little for one minute. You're not doing so much, Linus. You need to stand up more. What are you doing? So basically, this I is... I could be your watch. This is just a... Hey, Linus, you have an email. <laughs> You'd like to change the song? Okay, boop. That would actually read be... read the person? That would be kind of a funny sketch, you know? It's like the, like the, the, the smart, smart watch, person? The smart watch. <laughs> it's like, you know what? Everything my smart watch does, I could do just as easily with a butler. <laughs> That's why smart watches are stupid. That is why Apple can't sell $10,000 smart watches. It's because they just want Because anyone butler. who can afford a $10,000 watch could just hire a freaking butler <laughs> to change a song. Hey, Siri. Actually, sir, my name is Arthur. Hey, Siri. You're Siri if I tell you to be Siri. 
you go for a run and he has to like run beside you and if you're like next song it's like take take your phone out of your pocket and like boop put it back in no no he should be holding no no you have a bluetooth link to his phone there you go so he stops for a minute changes the song and then has to kind of sprint to catch up <laughs> I kind of wish we made this video. Oh, we can. We still could. Yeah. We still could. Smartwatch, smartwatch Butler edition. Yeah. Hmm. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, okay. So Luke. <laughs> Setting off an email. Yeah. I, I'm Fantastic. Gonna make, I'm gonna do a memo I really right want to do this. Smartwatch, or like like Apple Watch. Butler. I'm edition. gonna cover something real quick while you're doing that. That probably most people watching this know already. Ellen Pow has resigned from her former role as the interim CEO of Reddit. She's been replaced with one of the co-founders, actually, Steve Huffman, um, founder and original Reddit CEO, actually. He's returning. Uh, they were saying that he's like the benchmark of a CEO that they were looking for, and they were looking around, and then he was available, so they got the benchmark, blah, blah, blah. There was a lot of bragging and stuff going on, and that's cool. Um... Apparently it was a mutual decision, uh, blah, 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 blah. Basically, Pow and the rest of the chair people were in a non agreement about uh, Reddit user growth and all this kind of stuff, so they split ways. So, yeah. Yeah. Even in her leaving the company, I don't think all of the hatred was actually recognized. Wrecked. Yep. Okay, so right, Groove Groove Music Service. Let's go back to that. Yeah. Um, so basically, it's just a rebranding of Xbox Music, which is a rebranding of Zoom Music. I kind of wish they'd just gone back to Zoom. I liked Zoom. Yeah. Zoom You're the Zoom like a good name. app. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. I loved it. There was like a few minor things that I would have liked to change. That's uh, it. Like, I, I thought it was just the biggest, like, butthead move ever to call it Xbox. Yeah. Like, I, I guess the uh, Xbox is entertainment. No, Xbox is games. Yeah. You've worked so hard to make Xbox games. Why don't you just let it be games? Yeah. And we can just call music Zoom or apparently um, Groove. Groove. Like, uh, just keep naming it different things. Hotmail? No. Outlook. Internet Explorer? No. I don't actually know what it is anymore. <laughs> Should have well, just stuck with Project Spartan. It is a new. Yeah, I like Spartan. Yeah. yeah, I can't remember what it's called anymore either. Spartan was cool. Yeah. You know, the thing about the, the whole the whole rebranding thing is that uh, particularly the Outlook one really drives me crazy. And, like, I understand why uh, why SkyDrive changed to OneDrive. Yeah. It was actually, like, a trademark and thing. And why... They had to do that. What was it? Metro Tiles? No. Yeah, Metro Tiles. Modern, Metro Tiles? Yeah. Sure. Changed yeah. to Modern UI or Metro yeah. UI. Um, in this case, it just seems kind of ridiculous. And in the case of the Outlook one, it just caused confusion. Yeah. Because you have a program called Outlook, and then you have like a webmail interface that literally has nothing to do with that program, except that you could, if you set it up, have this mail show up in that program and sync, but you could also have a different service and or a different client. So that was just really confusing. That was really weird. And Groove Music is just like the word Groove. Did anything good? <laughs> ever have Groovy in the name. Groovy, baby. Yeah, Austin Powers was yeah. kind of a good movie. I can't even like, do it right. I mean, okay, Straw Poll. Can you think of anything good that was called Groove or Groovy? Other than anything that Austin Powers ever defined yeah. as Groovy or good. Like, like I'm talking like the official name. Like, it has to be like, like a company or a product or something. Now I need to Google this and get examples of things called Groove. Google's just going to be like, a groove is a thing in a thing. No, that's not what I'm talking about. Groove HQ. Groove is a sense of propulsive rhythmic feel or sense. That's actually the first definition. I'm surprised, actually. Did you type it with a capital? No. Oh. Interesting. Groove. So there's already something called Groove. All right. So you guys, let us know. Is Groove just a stupid name an for anything? Thing. Really? The hell oh, that's funny. This? Anything good groovy. So we got turnip winning. We've got yes coming in second, and we've got okay. What, what is your most people for yes? disagree with me? Most people disagree with me. So there you go. Most people do not agree with Linus today, and that's fine. Linus can accept that. Groove shark. Groove shark. Groove shark. What wasn't that something else? 
Groove Shark. Groove Shark. Groove Shark. Groove Shark. I knew Groove Shark is online and streaming. Okay, so it was a. Uh, what is this? Web based music streaming service. That's really similar to something called Groove. Oh, dear music fans, today we are shutting down Groove Shark. There you go. So shut down in 2015. So. That timing was good. Yep. For Microsoft. If they really, 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 really wanted to use the word Groove in their online music streaming service name. Uh, what can we say about it? So, blah, 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 renaming Xbox Music was originally part of the Zune Music Management software, though they distanced it after the failure they experienced with the Zune device. Changed over to Xbox Music with the release of Windows 8. Um, didn't get much traction since it only offered game music and was only available on the Xbox 360. Didn't work on smartphones. Well, uh, now being renamed to Groove Music with the same pricing model, $9.99 a month or $100 a year. No info on whether they will release a family plan and currently an app within Windows 10. No new features to announce or of, as of yet, aside from the ability to play music uploaded to OneDrive, which you're is... A, you're a Google Music person. I am. What do you think? What do I think? I think it's more expensive than Google Music with absolutely nothing compelling about it to make me want to switch to it. Cool. In line with Microsoft's new direction of service as a service company. Yeah, that's fine. I guess it's just like, you know, Apple at least did something. And it's funny because we gave Apple crap about not really innovating. At least they've got like their thing about artists engaging with fans. Because Apple's a social network now or something. Uh, but at least they had something. Microsoft is literally taking something that wasn't successful, calling it Groove, and then, like, now they're expecting Android and iOS versions sometime soon after Windows 10, which is also soon. So I don't even know why they're talking about it at all right now. <laughs> they should just be avoiding talking about it. And they super missed the boat. Like, everybody else is already doing very well. Well, remember too, like, even if you missed the boat and you capture 3% of the online music streaming it's service still, revenue, it's still going to be, it's still going to be, you know, a positive thing. Yeah. Um, is it 6 o'clock already? It is 6 o'clock already. Wow. What have we even talked about on the We actually show? covered, like, most of the talk. We, you know, the funny thing is, is there wasn't even really that much. No. Um, and you know, I've noticed that about the WAN show recently. We've just, it's just kind of been whatever. Well, it slows down during this time of the year, so we got to fill it in a little bit more. Okay, when Japan show. and U.S., not the actual countries, companies within the countries, are going to be dueling giant robots. Did you hear about this? Yes. Yeah. This should have been not in rapid fire. Yeah, this is, like, kind of awesome. This in fact, badass. the fastest possible that I filmed today, I, I referenced that. I actually wasted, like, 30 seconds of a fastest possible just talking about that robot battle that's coming, because I think it's awesome. Yeah. Because fastest possible is only, like, three and a half to four minutes of actual content, so it's like an eighth of the video. I think it's interesting, though, that, like, the Japan robot looks like it would beat the crap out of something in a melee contest, probably because Japan likes melee and katanas and stuff. Then the American one's like, guns, <laughs> because America really likes guns. Canada! And are... the Japanese guys were like, let's do melee! I'm like, oh. I realize that would be way cooler to watch, but like, yeah. I also get why you're asking that. Melee is going to be way cooler to watch. Yes, I'm stoked for that, but like, the Americans might lose now. Apparently people prefer the less focused WAN show lately, where we just are apparently just talking about whatever. So there you go, that's a thing. Cool. Um, speaking of just talking about whatever, I think the show's pretty much over, but I have something pretty exciting. Um, Edsel has made some very interesting headway on the new workflow for our video production. So I will be installing a couple of virtualized instances of Windows 8. We may not even need a server OS anymore. Okay. Of Windows 8 on the uh, 36 core server and seeing if we might have a workflow that involves multiple instances of Adobe Media Encoder rather than a $5,000 piece of software and we may be able to achieve the same performance. And in the case of Adobe Premiere, because a big problem with the footage that we have now is it's really hard to edit with because it skips around as you scrub through the timeline. Like you, you'll see like freeze frames here and there as you're, as you're scrubbing through. Well, we're gonna be using a different codec and um, this new workflow that we're working on gives us better performance in Premiere, 
faster overall video export times and could potentially cost us actually very little. So I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited to check that out. That's cool. And I'm excited for all 6,500 of you. I think we actually peaked a little bit higher than that. All 6,500 of you that tuned into the WAN show today. Thank you all very much. And we will see you again on WAN show next week. Same bat time. Same bat channel. Also by then, you may have seen the video with the toys. Dildo we racing. Ah. <sighs> Oh, yeah, this. Outro. Oh, what the heck just happened? Linda.com. Is this it? Okay, we're done here. Goodbye. Squarespace. Oops. Squarespace. Oh, crap. Where's the Linda one? There. Linda.